Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's EACTA congenital and pediatric webinar, which is on low cardiac output syndrome in congenital cardiac surgery. My name is Mona Momeni, and I am the chair of the congenital subcommittee within EACTA. And uh, uh, I have the pleasure to introduce you four excellent international speakers uh, who have accepted to give a lecture uh, at this webinar and we will see that you will see that we have kept the balance between uh, European and non-European speakers and we have also tried to uh, keep uh, a gender equity with two female speakers and two male speakers. At the end of this webinar I hope that you will be better on, you will better understand the updates in current evidence, best practice and different diagnostic and therapeutic interventions for low cardiac output syndrome that you will better understand the role uh, of different inotropes such as milrinone and levosimendan and vasopressors also in the management of low cardiac output syndrome and that you will uh, see the value of perioperative near infrared spectroscopy monitoring in the diagnosis and management of low cardiac output syndrome. This webinar is accredited by the European Accreditation Council for continuing medical education and you will get at the end of this webinar two credits. So, so please note that if you have any questions during this webinar, you, have, you can al always uh, uh, put your questions in the chat box. We will handle all the questions at the end of this webinar and if there are any questions that cannot be answered, uh, we will get the answers on the, on the website, on the EACTA website, uh, and the answers will be posted by the speakers. We have also incorporate, incorporated four polls into this webinar, uh, uh, and uh, I warmly invite you to answer to these polls, and I will show you the results of these polls, polls during the um, webinar, and uh, before each presentation, we will start with one, uh, one poll. So uh, before starting with the, uh, bef with the first presentation, I will start and show you the first poll of this webinar, which is, uh, what is your inotrope of choice? One, is it milrinone? Two, is it levosimendone? Or three, is it dobutamin? So please note that you can uh, uh, chat your results in the chat box and that you have five minutes to answer each poll. So now it's my pleasure to introduce to you the first speaker of our uh, uh, webinar, which is Dr. David Faraoni from Canada. Dr. Faraoni uh, is a staff anesthesiologist at the Hospital for Sick Children and Associate Professor of Anesthesia in the Department of Anesthesiology and Pain Medicine at University of Toronto. Dr. Faraoni is an associate editor of anesthesiology, anesthesia analgesia, and pediatric anesthesia. And he has, uh, in, the in the last 10 years, he has published over 130 publications. So today he will talk to us about the incidence, definition, and diagnosis of low cardiac output syndrome in congenital cardiac surgery. Thank you, David. Thank you, Mona. Uh, and thank you, Mohamed, for organizing uh, this webinar and also for the kind invitation. Um, so today I'm gonna to talk about the incidence definition of diagnosis of low cardiac output uh, syndrome. Um, I do not have any conflict of interest. Uh, some of you might know that my primary topic of interest is usually transfusion and hemostasis. So I did spend some time working on, on those slides before the webinar and kind of realized um, that the literature is actually relatively poor, uh, and the evidence uh, of all the things I'm going to mention to you today are, are quite weak. However, uh, what I'm going to try to do with you this morning or this afternoon for you guys is to define low cardiac output syndrome in, in congenital heart surgery. I'm going to review the incidence and the risk factors for low cardiac output syndromes uh, and discuss diagnoses uh, of, of the low cardiac uh, output syndrome. So just before uh, we start, uh, I would like to just remind you a little bit of what the topic will be. So when we talked about cardiac output, um, we have to remind ourselves that the goal of cardiac output is to provide um, enough flow to provide oxygen to the tissues and the cells. 
And you remember this uh, two equation there uh, with the relationship between DO2 and VO2, so oxygen consumption and oxygen delivery. And I'm going to summarize that very quickly with you uh, in a minute uh, before we start with the real uh, topic. So just to remind you um, that cardiac output um, is in relationship with uh, the oxygen content and uh, the oxygen delivery, and that the oxygen content is in relationship with the hemoglobin, the oxygen saturation, as well as the PaO2, and that there's a small amount of freely dissolved uh, oxygen in the plasma. Just to start here, um, let's look at this relationship a little bit ca more carefully. So when you look at the, at the um, relationship between DO2 and VO2, oxygen consumption, uh, oxygen delivery, you see that when the oxygen delivery decreases, for quite a significant amount of time, uh, the oxygen consumption will remain the same. And it will remain the same because of the increase in the oxygen extraction, as you know. Until we reach this critical DO2, which is the critical uh, oxygen delivery point here, um, and then the, 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 the cardiac output is not enough to provide this oxygen delivery to the tissues anymore, and therefore you'll see a drop in the oxygen consumption. And parallel to that, you see that the lactate will start increasing. So you can't extract any more, and therefore you see the lactate start increasing there. This relationship has been known for decades and decades, and you remember from old studies that the oxygen construction the DO2 VO2 relationship can be moved up and down depending on different conditions. We know that the sepsis is a high demand uh, uh, condition. We know that sedation and or anesthesia will uh, decrease the oxygen consumption. So this you can play with at a different time point using different uh, mechanisms. So let's go back to what we, we want to talk about today, which is the low cardiac output syndrome. So what is the definition? So the definition of low cardiac output syndrome is a clinical manifestation of mismatched oxygen delivery and metabolic demand driven by myocardial dysfunction and or cardiovascular insufficiency. So the definition of low cardiac output is, the, it is therefore when you look at this curve, you, you, you end up being past this critical due to, and so the, the state of low cardiac output syndrome will put you in this part of the relationship. And so the conclusion, the, the, the association between low cardiac output is mainly because you will reach this level of inadequate tissue perfusion and all the clinical and biologic manifestations of low cardiac output will be associated to explained by this low tissue perfusion, which means elevated lactate, metabolic acidosis, increased AVO2 difference, and oliguria. A slightly different way to define uh, the low cardiac output syndrome is the STS, so the Society of Thoracic Surgeons definition uh, that you usually see when uh, publications are around the use of STS. But uh, the STS is defining the low cardiac output syndrome as a state characterized by some of the following tachycardia, oliguria, decreased skin perfusion, need for increased inotropic support, which is 10% above the baseline uh, at admission, metabolic acidosis, why not AVO2 saturation, need to reopen the chest or to open the chest, and finally need for mechanical support. So you see this definition here is more clinical uh, and shows you all the different things that you will find in patients with low cardiac output syndrome. So let's talk about um, definition and incidence now. So when you look at the literature, a lot of people are referring to this particular publication from 1995 when they talk about the incidence of, of low cardiac output syndrome, which is somewhat uh, surprising because the goal of the study was not to define uh, the incidence of low cardiac output syndrome, but more to compare two different perfusion strategies uh, in neonates undergoing TGA, uh, arterial switch or operation for a transposition of the great arteries. But what you've, we've learned from this study is that the incidence of this drop of cardiac index, uh, less than two liter per minute per square meter, is about 25%. And, and if you go 